a University of Kansas study which studied the performance of students from grade 9 to 12 revealed 97% of student athletes graduated high school 10% higher than students who did not participate in sports. The study also found that student athletes have a higher GPA than their non-athletic counterparts. Matt Troha is the Assistant Executive Director of the Illinois High School Association. His success is predicated on cultivating successful relationships and innovative communication. He joined me this week to have a conversation about why sports play such a critical role in the overall development of a student athlete's character, willingness to adapt, and the foundation of their competitive and societal adrenaline to make an impactful difference which can leave a legacy of positive influence for generations to come. I'm Kevin McShan, led to this conversation. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. So, Matt, I know that uh, you are fiercely committed to innovative communication when it comes to communicating with the people you serve. I'm wondering if we can start our conversation by uh, you telling me what innovative communication means uh, to you. Um, I think to me it just means. Um, a willingness to always be able to to, uh, to try new things, um, to be adaptable. Um, I've been with the IHSA now for about 15 years, and, and we have certainly changed the way that we communicate with our member schools and our coaches. Uh, there was a time where we asked everybody to come to a, a sort of a, a backdoor website within our website and, and get information there. And, um, you know, certainly uh, that climate has changed over the years, and, and people want information pushed to them. So, we do a lot more via email, um, via social media. We were just had a staff meeting this morning and talking about how we've added TikTok to our uh, uh, to our list of social media sites that we're using. So, um, yeah, I think it's just a, a, always a willingness to to try and you know live where people are, try and figure out what they're using, how they're getting their uh, how they prefer to get information, and and being willing to to try and and do that. Yeah, and that's a uh, you brought up uh, social media, so I'm wondering how it affected the athletic world when it, when it comes to a sort, of, sort of enticing uh, student athletes to play and stay committed to sports. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, people are always going to point to the negative um, because we do see some things on there. I think that, that can be suspect from time to time, but... Um, I, I think overall, though, it's, it's been a huge positive in sports and especially in high school sports, um, just the ability to, to, for uh, coaches to communicate with their teams and let them know about practice changes and site changes and things like that. Um, certainly the, the student athletes themselves have a greater ability to, uh, you know, kind of promote their brand. And uh, you think about NIL and where that's, that's coming and, and where it's going. And how huge that is and, and the ability for students to connect with college coaches and create more opportunities at the next level. Um, you know, I think it's made everybody more independent and, and uh, just made information more easily accessible. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, about time, I know that we both share a mutual uh, passion for 
cultivating sustainable relationships because you and I both know that, that that's the sort of the heartbeat of uh, get, getting in, anything done and making progress. So tell me about the importance of uh, establishing sustainable relationships in the work that you do. Well, yeah. You know, the way I look at the IHSA is um, we have about 25 employees. Uh, we have a board of directors of volunteer principals, and we have 800 member high schools and uh, over 40,000 coaches. And, and I really look at all of those individuals, the, the principal, the AD, the superintendent at each of those schools, and then those 40,000 coaches. I look at them as, as my bosses because that's what the association is. It's who I answer to. Um, so for me, you know, I think the biggest piece in, in cultivating a, a relationship is it's always about trust. Um, it's about establishing trust and, and showing that you're a person who is worthy of their trust. Um, you know, we deal with a lot of hot, hot button, hot topics, things like that. Uh, so, um, you know, you're certainly going to have disagree with you or are angry or disappointed um, in things that either you've done or the IHSA has done. Um, but I think that as, as long as you show people, um, you know, that you're a, a good person, a person worth of trust who does things for the right reason, um, you can cultivate those relationships and, and they will last and sustain through uh, those, those tough times. Yeah, absolutely. And Matt, tell me, when we look at uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion in the lens of developing a strong leadership and inclusive culture in high school sports. What do you think of, buddy? Yeah, you know, it, it's funny you ask me that. Our staff right now is uh, uh, actually going through a book study that um, the NFHS is promoting nationally for, for all state high school association staff to go through. Uh, we're all reading a book on um, diversity, equity, and inclusion and uh, how, how we can better incorporate that into our organization. So uh, a very topical for us, but um, you know, we want our, our staff to represent our membership. Um, and, and I think when we talk about DEI, we, we often just, um, we generally get caught up in, in ethnic diversity. Um, but, you know, it, it's also about male, female. It's about backgrounds. Um, it's about where you come from. Because if you look at the IHSA membership as a whole, it's incredibly diverse. We have, as I said, over 800 member high schools. We have uh, schools that are as big as 8,000 and, and schools as small as 30. Um, we have private schools, we have public schools, we have religious schools, we have charter schools, um, and we also have schools in, in rural areas and, and cities and, and everything in between. So, um, you know, it, as I said, we have a staff of 25, so it's hard to, to hit every uh, check mark on that list amongst our staff. But um, I think if you have a, a group who's open to, to diverse, um, being diverse, understanding other people, where they come from, what their issues are, um, you know, it's going to make you stronger as a staff and, and your membership stronger as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. And that, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm going to share just a little bit about myself. So I originally went to uh, college to become a, a, a sports reporter, but you know, I actually have what's called um, spastic quadriplegia. Uh, cerebral palsy. So one of the reasons I wanted to become a sports reporter was because I couldn't play sports, right? Because of the disability. So I'm curious when you look at um, uh, encouraging students with disabilities to uh, to play sports. What kind of lens do you take when when you look look to uh, promote that as a, as an organization? Yeah, well, we just, uh, our entire goal is to create opportunities for high school students. Um, we, we know that there's data out there that says if a, a student is engaged in, in an extracurricular at their high school, uh, they're more likely to attend school. They're more likely to get better grades. They're more likely to stay out of trouble. Um, there are countless uh, surveys and studies that, that support that. And so um, we want to just create opportunities for every student and uh, we're, we're really proud of some of the things that we've done uh, in Illinois in that regard at the IHSA. You know, we have your, your standard, your footballs and your basketball and your volleyball and your softball that you'd expect. Um, but we also became the first state high school association in the country to offer bass fishing. 
Um, we just conducted our first esports um, tournament uh, uh, last year. Um, so that's one of the things that we continue to do is to look at our high schools and say, hey, hey uh, you know, there are students there who, who maybe can't compete in baseball or football or volleyball. What, can, what are they doing, and, and can we incorporate that into the IHSA? So uh, no matter what uh, you're dealing with, and, and if you have a disability, we have special in, in sports. We have special divisions for athletes with disabilities. But then we also have these different programs like journalism, like chess, um, like bass fishing, that, that really any student can be a part of. And uh, we want students to just be involved. That's, that's our goal at the, very, at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Back from a general perspective, I'm curious to get your perspective on the importance of uh, sports and physical education in schools today and how it's really evolved o over time. Well, you know, again, that's another topical question coming out of the pandemic because I think that we saw, especially among student athletes, uh, um, just the mental health issues um, that, that not having sports um, created for, for a lot of students. Um, you know, for better or worse, uh, we, we put a lot of emphasis on sports in our society. And I think for the most time it is for the better, even if we sometimes dwell on, on the negatives too much. But, um, you know, we invest a lot of time and, and resources into our sports, and um, they're very important to our, our students for a variety of reasons. Um, so, you know, but just the fact that, that you're getting out there, you're engaged, um, there's the, the social aspect of being around your peers. There's the mentorship uh, of your coaches. Um, there's the physical aspect of, of getting exercise. Um, I think we just, we know all of those things are incredibly positive to the makeup of, of our young people. Um, so that's why we are, are such proponents of them. Truha says that parents play a critical role in shaping their children's desires to play sports and remain committed to the process. However, he also says it's important for student athletes to develop their own love of sports absent their parents' influence, if at all possible, to ensure an authentic experience for everyone. Well, yeah, I, I'm a parent of three myself that are, they're all playing sports and um, you know, I have a, my, my boys are, they live and breathe it and my daughter does it more for the social aspect. And, um, so I, I get to witness it not only through my job firsthand, but just through my kids as well. And, um, you know, I think parents and, and their background in sports is off, often a, uh, a key factor in, in whether or not, um, you know, sons and daughters get involved in, in athletics. And, you know, I think, uh, I, I think it's a great thing to, to open up the opportunity for and, and see if your kids have passion for it. And, um, but also you have to have um, that ability, I think, to, to kind of self-evaluate and, and make sure that it's, it's not becoming about you uh, and, and that it is because your, your son or your daughter loves to do that particular sport. And, um, you know, you don't, you don't want to make it about yourself and, and do the whole, you know, living vicariously through them and, and take away their passion for it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I think that, that parents play a, a significant uh, role in, in the involvement in athletics. Yeah, absolutely. And tell, me, tell me your opinion on how important you think sports is to developing social capital in high school athletes today. Uh, I think it's tremendously important. Um, in addition to my, my job here at the IHSA, I also serve on the uh, – the uh, school board for, for the school district that, that I reside in. And um, so from both perspectives, I really get to see um, how important it is to, to some students. Um, you know, there are, there are a lot of students who, who struggle in school or who simply just don't like school. And, and oftentimes sports can be um, that carrot for them that, that keeps them going, that keeps them academically eligible. Um, so it, it just, it's incredibly important and, and then you add in the, uh, the, the perspective of, of a coach and, you know, you, you hope, you hope that, uh, that they're, they're surrounded by positive coaches, coaches who help them not only from an athletic standpoint, but to help build them into to better young people. Um, 
but uh, that that social component is, is massive. And, and then the other part we talked about already, just the, uh, the mental health of, of being around your friends and experiencing um, the camaraderie of, of being on a team. Um, you know, not everyone's going to start, not everybody's going to be a star, but uh, you know, everybody has a role. And, and I think that uh, uh, great coaches will help define that role for each player and, and get them to invest uh, the soul, soul capital in, in being involved. Yeah, Matt, and, and, you know, I truly believe that, that sports is, is a real bonding agent and bringing uh, people together it helps to build a uh, consensus. So I'm just wondering, your thoughts on the notion of building com uh, community in sports and how important that is? Yeah, you know, if you look at our, our current political climate, it, it sometimes feels like building consensus is, is uh, the, the most difficult thing that we can do in, in our world. But um, when I look at it from a, a work perspective here at the IHSA, um, you know, we had a, a board of directors meeting yesterday. We had our, our August board meeting and um, that group of volunteer principals and athletic directors that serve on our board, uh, th there are definitely differing opinions and viewpoints. Um, that come about in their discussions. And, and a lot of that is built upon some of the things we talked about already, the, the, the very different backgrounds that they come from, the small schools and large schools and private and public. Um, that's going to create different viewpoints and, and opinions. Um, but what I see in them is, is a group that, at the end of the day, shows respect for one another. Um, they, they, they all want to get to the same place, which is what's doing best for students. Um, sometimes the path to get there looks a little different for each of them. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I know that they, they come away with, uh, as I said, trust and respect for one another and, and for those viewpoints. And then they're able to move on to, to the next issue. And, um, you know, on the next issue, they may see eye to eye and, and on others, they will not. But uh, I think as long as everybody's pulling on the rope in that same direction, um, you know, you're going you're gonna to help build consensus overall. Yeah, I'm not to that point. I'm wondering your your viewpoints and opinions on well, how important sports is to really building confidence within student athletes to take ownership of not only their athletic life but also the other aspects of their life as well. So, how important is that sports is to building confidence in student athletes? Yeah, I think that, that sports build confidence in, in athletes in, in a number of different ways. I mean, I think the, the first part is just you can always look at success and growth within a sport, right? Um, you know, I wanted to, to run the 100-meter the dash in this time, and, and over time I was able to achieve that, or I, was, I wanted to, to hit a curveball, and now I'm doing that. So um, there's the, the tangible there of, uh, of being able to see the results of, of your labor and your practice um, but I think another huge part of that is, is that we touched on already a little bit is that mentorship from coaches and adults, um, th that are involved in your program. Um, a great coach, regardless of their record is somebody who's going to, um, challenge you as, as not only an athlete, but also as a person, um, as a student, um, just, just try and, um, kind of force you to recognize your talents, get the most out of them. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Matt, I'm, I'm curious to ask you about uh, the future of high school sport, sports, not only in Illinois, but over in America as well. What do you see as uh, emerging trends, or how would you characterize the future of high school sports? Well, I, I think the future of high school sports is, is very bright. Um, you know, at, at a national level, uh, uh, participation continues to grow, especially among uh, female students, female participation. Obviously, we just uh, celebrated 50 years of, of Title IX, and female high school sports participation has continued to just explode over that time, and, and I think will only continue to grow. Um, you know, some of our concerns that we see are our specialization um, and, and how that maybe takes away from rosters, especially at smaller schools in our state. But um, I, I think that there is a, an overall message um, nationally and, and that's trickling down about, um, you know, how important uh, uh, multi-sport, you know, participation is um, from 
uh, developing and how it, how it helps you in other sports and, and how also uh, if you specialize too much, it can create injuries and, and, and health concerns. But, uh, you know, I, I think I talked about all the different things that we do in, in Illinois. Uh, and I think that uh, both here in Illinois and nationally, you'll just see uh, associations look to do more and more, um, provide more offerings for, for students and, and just look for new sports as well. Yeah, absolutely. And Matt, my final question for you this morning has to do with your own personal and professional legacy, buddy, and how you want that to be defined. Uh, you know, my, my personal and professional legacy, I, I guess I, I just want to be remembered. Uh, uh, at the beginning, we talked about sustainable relationships, and, and I talked about trust uh, being really important to me. So I, I'd like to be remembered as a, a trustworthy individual, somebody who worked uh, works and, and works very hard on behalf of uh, the IHSA and the, the student athletes that we represent. Um, one of the reasons that I'm here is because of my high school experience. And uh, I was surrounded by, by a couple of uh, football coaches who were outside of my, my dad, my brother, probably the most important male influences on my, my life um, at a time when, when I really needed that. And so um, because of that high school sports experience, uh, I wanted to work here and uh, uh, try and create as many opportunities as I could uh, for, for other young people to have that same experience. So um, I, I, that's how I, I hope to be remembered as, as somebody who, who did did what all that they could uh, in, in the right way uh, to try and help uh, uh, young people here in Illinois. Yeah, absolutely. And Matt, tell me finally if people want to get connected with you personally or uh, the association, what's the best way they can do that, Bobby? Oh, absolutely. Just uh, go to IHSA.org and you'll find all the information on our nearly 40 sports and activities and our, our staff and uh, all the different initiatives that we offer. Fantastic. Well, Matt, I really want to uh, uh, thank you for engaging in conversation with me, joining me today, and for the work that you do to influence the uh, lives of student athletes in Illinois in a positive fashion, buddy. Your work in the space and time on behalf is most appreciated. And I want to thank you for being here this morning. Yeah, thank you so much for the uh, the offer and opportunity. It was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed talking with you.